Hi game developers. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create, import, and use sprite sheets in Default. The tutorial covers adding the texture packer extension to Default, creating sprite sheets using static sprites, creating flipbook animations, and creating a script to move a character. Let's get started by creating a new empty project in Default. The next step is to add the Texture Packer extension. For this, visit the default web page and navigate to the Assets portal. From the list of tags, select Tools and scroll down until you find it. The extension is quite new, so you'll have to scroll down a bit. Copy the URL provided in the description, the latest version for now. If you want to release your game, switch to a specific version from the releases list. Back in default, open the game.project file and scroll down until you see the dependencies section. Add the copied URL as a new entry to the list. Finally, install the new extension. For this, open the project's menu and click Fetch Libraries. Wait until default is finished with activating it. You should see a new puzzle icon showing up in the assets tree. With this, the installation of the extension is finished and we can use it to import sprite sheets. Let's now install Texture Packer to create our sprite sheets. Texture Packer is available for Windows, macOS, and Linux, and runs locally on your computer. This makes it fast and easy to use without needing to upload your images to unknown servers on the internet. Download it from our webpage, um, www.codeandweb.com, and install it on your computer. Yes, Texture Packer costs some money, but it's worth it. The first release was in 2010, and since then, it has received constant updates and new features. You also get support in case you have any issues with the software. By the way, it's a one-time payment and no subscription. Now start the application. We use the 7 days trial version for this tutorial. For this, select Try Texture Packer Pro from the startup dialog. Let's now create your first sprite sheet. Start by creating a folder called Assets inside your project folder. Inside this folder, create two folders, Sprites and Sprite Sheets. I prepared some sprites for you to use in this tutorial. To get them, check the links in the description below. Copy the Game Scene folder into the Sprites folder. The folder contains a background sprite and the animation of Cap Guy walking. Now drag and drop the Game Scene folder onto Texture Packer. In the sidebar, click the button next to the Framework label to choose your game engine. A new dialog will open. Type Default to filter the items in the list. Select the engine and click Convert. Let's now select the output files to save. Texture Packer not only creates a sprite sheet, but also a description file with the locations and names of all your sprites. Save this file inside the Sprite Sheets folder you created earlier. Use the name Game Scene. The extension .tpinfo is added automatically. Now, press Publish Sprite Sheet in the toolbar to save the Sprite Sheet and data file to your project folder. Finally, save the project file. This is not required, but it will allow you to easily update your Sprite Sheets and add more sprites later. That's it for now in Texture Packer. Let's switch back to Default. Using Static Sprites. In Default, you can now open the GameScene.tpinfo file we just created. What's special about Texture Packer is that it uses polygon shapes to reduce the transparency of your sprites. This improves game performance and reduces memory usage. To use the sprite sheet in Default, you need to create a new Texture Pack Atlas file. It holds additional information that the engine uses for the sprite sheets and animations. To do this, right-click the Assets folder, select New, and then Texture Packer Atlas. Again, use the name Game Scene for this file. On the right side, in the Properties panel, click the three dots and select the Game Scene TP Info file from the dialog. Now, select the Main dot Collection in the Assets panel on the left. On the right side, create a new game object and name it Background.
Right click the game object and select add component, then choose sprite. Click the three dots next to image and select gamescene.tp atlas from the dialog. For default animation, select background from the list. Set the coordinates for the sprite to x480 and y320, which are half of the sprite's dimensions. Set the z value to minus 0.9. To move it behind the animation, we'll add in the next chapter. Let's take a look how our scene looks like. Navigate to the project menu and select build. OK, this already looks nice. Let's now add an animation to give it some life. Adding an animation to the scene. To add an animation, we have to define it first. For this, open the gamescene.tp atlas file again. Right click the texture packer atlas in the right panel and select add animation. In the properties, enter CapGuy for the ID and set the value for frames per second, FPS to 10. Now right click the CapGuy animation object and select add animation frames. In the dialog, click on the first frame and shift click on the last frame to select all frames. Finally, click Add Animation Frames to close the dialog. Switch back to the main collection and repeat the procedure to create a sprite. Create a new game object, this time name it CapGuy. Like before, add a sprite component to it. Again, select the gamescene.tp atlas as image, but choose CapGuy as the default animation. Move the sprite in the scene so that it's located right above the pavement. Use Build from the Project menu to preview the game scene. Nice. CapGuy is now walking in place. The final step for this tutorial is to add a script to make him move from left to right. Creating a script to move the character. To create the script, right-click the main folder and select New, then Script. Name the script CapGuy. Delete the contents of that file and replace it with the code you see here. Explaining how to create scripts would exceed the focus of this tutorial, but I can give you a short overview of what this one does. At the start, you see three variables. Move speed is the number of pixels CapGuy moves each second. Off screen is a position outside of the game scene where we move CapGuy back to the start. Left side is a position left of the screen where we place CapGuy so that he can enter the scene from the left again. The fixed update function is called at regular intervals. The important parameter is delta time, shortened to dt, which is the time that has passed since the last call of the function. In the function, we first get the current position of the object and store it in a variable called pose. Next, we add move speed multiplied by dt to the x coordinate to calculate the new position. The if statement checks if we have already moved past our off screen position, and if so, we reset cap guy to the left side. Finally, we set the new position on the game object. As you see, the script does not reference our CapGuy object directly, but uses a variable called GO to update its attached game object. We now have to attach the script to our CapGuy to make him walk. To do this, select the main collection again, right-click the CapGuy object, and choose Add Component File from the menu. In the dialog, select the CapGuy script and press OK. Now it's time for a final look at our game scene. Voila! Now, CapGuy walks from left to right across the screen. When he reaches the right edge, he reappears on the left side and continues his journey, creating a seamless looping animation. Let's wrap things up. In this tutorial, you've learned how to easily create sprite sheets with Texture Packer and how to use these sprites and animations in Default. I hope this helps you get started. If you make a game, let me know about it.